I would like to focus on what happened this week in Brazil, a country whose anaconda don't want none unless it's a tourist who got too close to the river. But to give you a basic idea of what Bolsonaro tweeted, it was essentially this. That's pretty much it. And you know it has been a weird, weird week when the leader of 209 million people is asking Twitter a question you'd expect Gail King to be asking R. Kelly. <laughs> All companies are inherited. How else would a person become CEO unless his father, Fred Apple, had founded a company using the family name and eventually handed it off to his son, Tim Apple? Isn't that how all businesses work? Because it's moments like these where the line between Donald Trump, actual president of the United States, and Adam Sandler starring in a 90s comedy with the premise, what if the worst person in the world was the president, completely disappears. <laughs> Not only did you refer to yourself in the third person twice, but you ended a sentence in which you're trying to come across as a statesman with the word, a brain. <laughs> Just imagine if any other president had done that. A house divided cannot stand. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> Speak softly and carry a very large a stick. <laughs> Robocalls, tied for most annoying type of phone call with every other type of phone call. <laughs> Ooh, it was the pause in that last one that made it a real cliffhanger. I mean, you basically knew where it was going, but there was a tantalising chance that they were calling people to inform them that the IRS was filing lawsuits against Nicolas Cage, <laughs> which you're, you assume is always true, but... It is just not often that a news report gets interrupted by the subject of that report. Is your teenager getting involved in a strange new sex trend? It's called watermeloning, and it involves... <laughs> God damn it, can you not do this somewhere else? Because what is the point of calling someone 20 times a day to collect a debt? Oh, this is actually great timing, because while I couldn't pay you 45 minutes ago, a small propeller plane full of unlaundered drug money just crashed into my den. Thanks so much for the call, you ravenous ghouls. <laughs> OK, that, that, that's both very impressive, and when you really think about it, not actually that impressive at all. It's basically the finale trick from the world's least amusing birthday magician. Ta-da! Wait, nothing? Well, guess what? The great laptop Dini got paid in advance, so fuck all of you. <laughs> you know, spoofing is actually the perfect technology for Susan Collins to be demonstrating, because think about it. It's all about temporarily pretending to be one thing and then disappointing everyone when you reveal who you actually are. <laughs> but, but despite sounding like urban dictionary slang for when magicians shoot heroin... <laughs> also, also a, a quick side note on that. His mother's social security number wasn't bleeped to protect her identity. It had to be censored because her social security number is fuck shit fuck dash cock twat dash taint jizz shit tits. It wasn't her choice. It wasn't her choice. Blame the social security administration. We can't go back to the days where everyone would just shout their message into a jar and then mail that jar across the country. <laughs> that was a terrible system. And it makes total sense why you would opt not to do that. I would rather receive a thousand phone calls a day every day for the rest of my life than go out and buy a stamp. I mean, <laughs> how the fuck would I even do that? The only mailboxes I ever see are those weird boarded up green ones. What the fuck are those things, by the way? They're spooky. That's what they are. It looks like a memorial of a past mailbox that died in a war. So... So we made real progress toward addressing a problem, but then we blew it. We basically got our one-year sobriety chip, then celebrated by drinking a gallon of Captain Morgan.